The prophets in the Bible were forced to hide in caves, put in prison, and murdered. Today, these self-proclaimed prophets are lavished, envied, and glamorized. So what changed? The answer is simple. Their message, the message, the message, the real prophets carried in times past was one that wasn't always popular or embraced. In fact, many of the kings of the Old Testament were directly responsible for the fate of many of the true prophets of their day because they would not allow being rebuked or corrected by the Lord. Fast forward to present times, and we see the title prophet and prophetess thrown around all over the place, like it's a door prize for showing up to a church. Secondly, many of these alleged prophets carry a one-sided message, and it's the one that gets them in the door, at the table, and the offering. If we're going to ask God for a fresh revival, it's going to have to start with restoring the true office of prophets and their full function in the body of Christ. As we get closer to the fulfillment of all things, the Bible tells us that the wicked will become more and more blind, whereas the righteous will know the hour and season we are in. The consequence of this has produced people in the church that want to label watchmen as alarmists or fearmongers. However, we must not let this move us, but continue to sound the alarm and share the gospel with a lost and dying world who is ignorant to the words of the prophets of old. Don't look for real prophets in the last days to be every Christian network. Eventually, the real prophets will be under the radar from persecution because they refuse to eat from the table of Jezebel. Many of these Christian networks are already filled with so-called prophets declaring peace to the people when there is no peace. These men and women stare into a camera declaring peace and prosperity to America when our nation has continued to shed innocent blood and promote what God has deemed to be abominations with no remorse and no repentance. This isn't a popular post and will probably be met with backlash. But the truth is, history will unwed repeat itself and those who take a stand and preach the whole uncompromised gospel will not be popular. In fact, they will be blacklisted from these networks and shunned by their denominations. The falling away has begun and the rise of the apostate church is before us. Believe it or not, there is still a remnant out there that are not coming to your services to hear funny jokes and be entertained. So please stop conducting services geared around this purpose. They can get this at home in front of the television. There is a real devil that has placed a bullseye upon their backs. Husbands, wives, mothers and fathers need to be equipped and empowered from the pulpit to proclaim victory over sin and the wiles of the enemy to preserve their marriages and their families in this hour. Motivational, self-centered and life-coaching massages are not cutting it. People need to be equipped to know how to go into the enemy's camp to plunder and rescue our loved ones that have been taken captive or under the influence of the wicked one. The people need to be equipped to know how to raise up the next generation, to walk in authority and power while proclaiming the good news of the gospel. They need to be equipped to know how to cast out devils, heal the sick, and raise the dead. They need to see it manifesting in the church and in their communities. They don't want to just read or hear about it anymore. They want to see the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit working in the earth today. Pastors and leaders, can we just get back to the foundation of the New Testament church? We can. We just get back to where it all began. The simplicity of the gospel. Jesus Christ and Him, crucified. This seems to be the heart cry of the remnant in this hour. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, 
I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock, and the rain descended. The floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 to... Something that needs to be emphasized here is the fact that the Lord tells us that the rain will descend, the winds will blow, and the floods will come to everyone. <laughs> They don't just come to those who are unbelievers, but it surely rains on both the just and the unjust. I have heard messages from behind pulpits that made it sound as if storms and troubles will not come to those in covenant with God, but this is contrary to the word of God. All of humanity is subject to a fallen world that includes hardships, sicknesses, poverty and tragedies. However, where the rubber meets the road are those who read and live out the word of God. These are those who you will see go through hell and high water and come out on the other side, full of faith, joy, and hope. These are those who will turn tragedies into triumphs and tests into testimonies. The house that Jesus is referring to here is not so much a brick, mortar, stone, or wood home, or structure as they can be destroyed by rains, winds, or floods, but a family that is built on the rock of ages. It's in the same connotation as what Joshua spoke of when he said, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. What matters is your foundation in which Everything in your life is built upon. A house built on sinking sand is a marriage relying on counseling and not God to sustain itself. An addict relying on rehab to break the chains. A church relying on programs and entertainment to keep the doors open and not the presence of God himself. When I meet men and women of God, that has been through storms in their life and they still have a smile on their face and joy in their heart. I know that this is a family that has surely built their house upon the rock. Yes, they have lost things along the way, through the rains, through winds, and through the floods, but they are still standing with faith in the rock who brought them through. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Psalms, chapter 18, verse 2.